have you shown me this? This is the Grinding Gear Podcast. I have returned from the desert to the swamp. Hey, everybody, I'm Garrett. Here, as always, my partner in crime, Kyle. Hello. I was in your old neck of the woods. My old stomping grounds, yes. New Mexico. Yes. New Brian Mexico. Cool. I, I really like it out there, man. I really like New Mexico. It's a pretty place, you know? I thought it's it was boring so... growing up, but now that I'm older, like, you know, the I'm sure beauty. you did. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you did. But now we 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 value things like going outside and it being pleasant. Mm, mm-hmm. um, and and that's 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 New Mexico. Also, I was there during the most perfect weather, dude. It was just like it was straight up Southern California weather. <laughs> There's wonderful. no time to go outside. There's too many video games. <laughs> this is the honest truth, I'm man. like, Lizzie, you got listen. There's no grass to touch in New Mexico, but you got to get outside and touch grass. Eventually. Except I was I was I spent a lot of time on a uh, New Mexico State University campus down there in Las Cruces, and they do have quite a bit of grass. I like the grass there. It's so weirdly different from Florida. It's like an alien planet to me, man. It's like it's familiar but totally different. Like so many things we're going to talk about today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, this, yeah, is, oh, this is gonna be oh, actually, dude. That's a loaded. Dude, that's a loaded segue. You this are not is wrong. bizarre. What a what a weird. What a weird thing going on on the internet right now. Um, oh my goodness. Uh, before we get into any of that, uh, I, I just want to give you an update because we're not going to talk about it today. We won't have time to talk about it today, but I did get to the most pornographic fan service part of Jedi Fallen Order. So I'm still making my way through Wait, it. Whoa, whoa, I'll tell you about it later. Are you, are you playing with mods? No, no, no. You, you know what I mean? Where I fought an ATST yeah, and, and then I climbed an ATAT. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah like that part, not, I didn't love, nothing but I didn't fan love that service. Part. I didn't love that part. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep you informed. But uh, I have an issue with, yeah, yeah, dude, Andor. So have you started Andor yet? No, I haven't. I... It's so good. Yeah, it I just hear. keeps landing it. Every episode, you're like, am I going to be bored? But no, I, I saw some people out there being like, it's boring. And those people just hate shows with plot. Um, hey, I'm seeing so... here, I'm, I'm, people are finding Ring of Power good. People love House of the Dragon. Like, there's a lot of flavors for a lot of different people. A lot of people I'm, are enjoying I, a lot I'm, of things. Hey, listen, Garrett's Garrett's premier television re- review corner, which is not a segment, and I'm making one right now. I'm going to chalk up season one of House of the Dragon to being a good show. That's what I hear. It was a good first season. The finale was great. It was a a bit of a cliffhanger, but not really. It really did feel like the end of a book where you're just like, okay, some shit went down. There's definitely more to come, but I can sit with this. I can sit with this during the break. It's not... I'm one of those crappy walking dead cliffhangers where they're like, we don't trust you, the audience to actually come back and watch this. So here's half a scene. Maybe someday. I didn't go back to, I didn't go back to watch the Negan season for like three years. I was so mad because of the uh, cliffhanger right before it. Should we dive in? Should we dive into this big, uh, this big pile of, of what the hell's going on? Uh, yeah, what the, what the Warcraft is going on? What yeah, let's the get Warcraft's going on? Good, 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 good. Oh, great news, everyone. Shove it. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, the World of Warcraft expansion hype machine is in. It is fully armed and operational, Kyle. <laughs> Battle station is go. Oh, my it, goodness. Including every content creator you love for Final Fantasy now making World of Warcraft videos. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um. It's wild. It's absolutely wild. So we run this thing called the YouTube channel where we can see analytics and they're they're very vague. Like occasionally it'll be like, hey, your audience is listening to a lot of ASMR videos. And you're like, oh, it doesn't tell you what kind. You know, maybe people are just listening to rain on the window or something. But we see, you know, people like a, a V YouTuber was really big a couple weeks ago. We see kind of the trends and YouTube, being a business platform, lets you know these trends. Everybody. Exclusions. So this is, this is the part of the show where I say, not some. Now I'm done. Everybody is watching 
World of Warcraft content right now. No matter how much they've decried it, no matter how much they hate it, everybody's watching reality TV. Well, I, I prefer documentaries, but at night you're still watching Hoarders. We all do it. We all watch some trash. And everybody's I, I think that's doing what's it. happening. I, 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 and, and not to take anything away, I think there are plenty of players who are legitimately stoked. Let's go. I know a lot of folks are dragons are their shit in World of Warcraft, and they're absolutely jazzed about this expansion. But I, I, I think it's we're having this perfect mix. It's this perfect mix, right? Like World of Warcraft is a type of topic where even if you're not playing it, you want to stare at the drama if there is drama. Mm -hmm. And right now it seems like there isn't, but I think a lot of us are still like, I still want to watch and see what my favorite personalities have to say about what's coming down the pipeline, whether or not you have any interest in playing it. And that's, that's my read on the situation. This is based on nothing but my gut feeling. I did like, with like, wow. And, and, and to a greater extent, <sighs> Activision Blizzard, which is its own can of deeply disturbed worms. Um, you can't, look away it's a content machine no matter what like there's a lot of youtubers twitch streamers that have made their living many you know switching from even playing a lot of video games to covering news and it's soundbite it's you know it, it's journalism whatever you want to call it it does get a lot of views i mean look at the johnny depp trial like have we talked about that here the johnny depp thing that happened how it like killed our channel for a month yeah for a solid <laughs> month like johnny depp ate all the youtube views it, it was yeah, wild. I, we're, we're, um, how do I put this? So, so I need to, I need to explain a thing. So this lands, uh, when people ask me what I do and I explain it to them, they, I see 75% of the time they go, Oh, so are you internet famous? And I go, no, I'm, I'm internet working class. That's, <laughs> that's where I am. <laughs> and that's how I feel about our channel. It does well, but it doesn't do like so well that we don't notice when the YouTube algorithm is no longer sending people our way. We really notice it when people aren't sending people our way. And the first time that's happened since the success of our channel was the Johnny Depp trial. And now we are in the second time this has ever really happened where we're like, holy shit, where did our views go? And it's it's because of World of Warcraft um, and Overwatch 2, which, yes. I, honestly i just want to shame everyone because like the number one thing i see complained about and bitched about and like insulted is overwatch 2 but apparently every like uh, more than half of the folks that normally watch our videos are just eating it up which i mean I just there's, find there's some translation right i think the new character is kiriko i think uh she throws like the the talismans and she i actually don't know how she works in game so but our audience, it makes sense, Final Fantasy audience, anime audience is enjoying that character over in Overwatch and looking up guides for it. You know, it, there's some translation there. I mean, honestly, I love magic. I love making magic decks uh, for Magic the Gathering. I like strategy games. So YouTube analytics naturally has my eyeballs and I find it fascinating. Well, it's, 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 I think it's a big reason I like the platform mm. um, is it actually serves you helpful Useful information. Data. Yeah. 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 Um, and it's, it's very easy and it's very well sorted, um, and visualized just everything. I do, I do like that. Listen, you know, every platform has its issues. We talked about this not that long ago with all the Twitch stuff going on right before I left. It's like, Hey, YouTube ain't perfect, but we're here for a reason. Um, you know, it's, it, it works for us. And, uh, yeah, anyway, it's, 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 it's been interesting. It's been interesting. We're going to, we're going to get another, we got like another thing coming out soon. You're going to get to hear some more thoughts, uh, about, about dragon flight and, and what that, what that means for us. But I'm just sitting here like giggling and also like giggling nervously. Cause behind the scenes, I've just been like, <laughs> Kyle, I want to try. Wow. Let's try. Wow. Together. Cause like, this is what we do. We play <laughs> co-op games now. Let's just co-op together. Who gives a shit what it is. Let's just try new co-op experiences. Let's go. E even though, uh, it's just entirely selfish. I miss wow a little. I like, wow. I no, still yeah, like, we, wow. We, we've talked about that before, you know, genuine article here. Garrett Wines Earl of the instance, you know, he, he loves WoW. Like, I absolutely get it. I love co-op games. I want to play Monster Hunter with you. I'm interested about that new yep. Hunting Wild or whatever it's called. Like, we, we, we enjoy co-op games. That's what we do. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I, I, I don't currently love WoW. I have a love for WoW. I have a deep yeah. love for that world, for that IP, for that universe, for my memories. Uh, not to get too nostalgic, I hate hanging a lot of stuff on nostalgia because I think it's a bit of a cop out, but it's also uh, inarguable. I have nostalgia for that game. So anyway, the, the nervous laughter is because I'm just like, I've been trying to convince you to like, let's just like, let's 
do an extra stream day. I'm not saying take away from our current streams. Like, let's tack something on. Let's just try and see how it goes. See how it see how it feels for you, Kyle. And now that this is happening, and it's part of the reason I was, was you were like, should we should we talk publicly about the analytics? I'm like, yes, let's talk talk publicly about the analytics. So oh, we're just being honest. It's hilarious. I, I could see it. I could see it. I know at some point. I know I'm going to win this. I know at some point I'm going to wear you down, and you're going to play World of Warcraft with me. And I'm just, I'm just worried everyone's going to be like, oh, you, there they go, the clout chasers. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm just trying, oh, to, they, I'm trying to wear dude, we, Kyle down since uh, Wrath Classic got a release date. We get called Final Fantasy fakers, so there's nothing we can do to avoid that situation. No, I, I personally... Hey, in our comments defense, uh, it was like this last week, and that's the first one I've seen in a really long time. So, uh, Which is funny, because that was genuinely hard content. Like, we actually, we worked really hard. <laughs> and it took, there was over 13 hours of footage in that the video. The only reason... The only reason that comment is living rent for me in my brain is because it's so hilarious. It yes. was like the most on the nose, like 2009 internet gatekeeping cringe. Like it was hilarious. I yeah. couldn't believe the terminology that that random in individual was using. I'm like, pe people still care about this. Like it's like me finding out that console wars still exist, which apparently they do. Oh, no, they I do. do. It's like it's violent. The biggest waste of energy. Well, it, it's there's fun to it, too. Like that people manufacture and there are those that have fun with it right like what was it, infamous prototype you got house of the dragon ring of power like there are people who legitimately enjoy a comparison but naturally there's those that take it way way too far uh in general like the the whole content storyline around mmos this week was fascinating yeah and I, there's so many there's so many angles to like start this out on but i do kind of want to go from that content creation sphere like this week you had preach putting up his big tweet his 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 final little tweet i really liked it i love this uh video oh, the of him. video yeah of him the sitting video in front of the orc statue it, dude it was genius yeah. it's absolutely genius like I've, I've 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 shown it to like three people i'm just like this this is this is how you do it that sounds this, like a this, small this, number, but I totally get yeah, you. Because you mean like real life people being like, hey, check that. You don't know what I do, but yes. you check this yeah, out. Like showing, like trying to explain this to like Katie or so like, I, that's how much I liked it. And it's just, and, and I don't even think Preach was a big offender of like, wow, I was dead. I'm never going to like, he, that's not how he played it, but he still took a pretty sizable break from the game, went and covered Final Fantasy 14. And like, of course he's got to go check out dragon no, I, like yeah i love the way you played that i think it's fantastic i have been worlds more aggressive than preach has like preach left the game aired his frustrations went to final fantasy said he'd come back then alpha rolled out and he was personally hurt like he was like what what, what did i do wrong why didn't i get an alpha invite are you serious i have worked so hard for your company i am a voice for your company a voice of support and you, you didn't see it fit to share it with my audience. I, I'm personally hurt. Then he got into beta and, and now he's kind of part of the content pipeline there. Um, they also put out a video this week of like a bunch of content creators, including Hazelnutty. Is that her name? I'm, Hazelnutty Games. Yeah. yeah, yeah she does like know. really short uh, strategy videos that I used to watch and I really liked her and a bunch of other ones. It was very scripted. It, it was it was a little it was a little on beat. You know what I mean? Like when you know something scripted and everyone's talking with that sing song tone. It, it, it was not the kind of content I personally enjoy. It was their survival guide. But World of Warcraft's machine is in full, like, throw the lever swing. And with Final Fantasy in its current endgame state of putting out Kyrugian dungeons, Criterion dungeons, or whatever. I'm not an endgame, so I can't really... Criterion. Yeah. Um, Did you call it Kyrugian? What, what is that word? The Kyrugian are the... The surgeons in Final Fantasy. Oh, perfect, yeah, perfect, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> That's why I'm like, are you yeah. making a joke, or are you actually getting it wrong? So my understanding, <laughs> and this is probably very wrong, but my understanding is Final Fantasy 14 had a content update where they put out dungeons that are kind of their answer to Mythic, at least from the outside. That's how it's perceived. When you beat them, you feel like you beat the game for now. And you unsub or you keep your sub rolling and just kind of move on with your life. And that's how you play the game. Everyone quotes Yoshi P saying, I, I want you to quit when you're done. Just walk away and then come back when you're ready. So this is the perfect time for World of Warcraft to strike when people are hungry for content. They're about to have a big expansion. Next Final Fantasy big update is going to be like a Christmas time. And there's a window here where World of Warcraft is muscling in and they have a lot of eyeballs. And the funny thing, of course, as a content creator is it has more eyeballs than the people who are willing to admit they're looking at it. 
Yeah, but I don't know. I the conversation we we've had with a lot of folks too, though a lot of a lot of the the pushback I've seen is like I'm not playing it, and I think they're they're likely telling the truth. Yeah, but it doesn't mean they're not watching. Right. Because I think even if you're if you're vehemently against it, I think there's a lot of folks out there that are still interested, just want to see how it plays out. Whether it's from a, a deep sea, they're like, I hope this fails kind of a thing, which just happened with that big emo concert in Las Vegas. I think a lot of people were looking at that like, ooh, is this going to be Fire Festival 2.0? And they canceled one day for high winds and then they went off fine. It was hilarious. But I was like, oh. sorry, Kyle, here I'm yeah. over in oh. pop punk emo I'd, land. Uh, I'd ask what you mean, I but I'm, I'm, there's so much crossover in, in community behavior, dude. It's, it's hilarious as someone who enjoys both. I, it's the I same thing with it's the same thing with Dungeons and Dragons, right? Like you have a lot of staunch content creators for Dungeons and Dragons that refuse to play anything else. And when D and D one was announced, everybody embraced it without knowing other systems that had become popular. So you have a very insular community. Uh, echo chambers, you know, overused and kind of puts in more of like a Twitter verse online sphere which D&D isn't always played in. But you have a lot of people that reinforce the way things currently are and want them to improve inside the sphere of D&D rather than going out and playing other games and then coming back to Dungeons & Dragons being like, hey, here's what Dungeon World is doing great. Here's what Call of Cthulhu is doing great. Can we incorporate these ideas? So you end up just sort of recycling everything all over again. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. I, don't, I I think it's healthy. I think I think we've entered this this for for me as someone who has been a been a part of the, the you know the 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 content cycle at least tangentially related to MMOs for damn near for over a decade now actually. I I started with StarCraft not an MMO, but all of this came from my World of Warcraft obsession. That's how I even found out there were people making crap about video games. Um it goes back that far for me. But I I, I think this is I think from a from a m most creator standpoints, I think this is probably the healthiest place a lot of creators have been in, where they they feel a freedom to go and explore multiple games. But you got you can't have that monopoly because you're going to end up in this Dungeons Dragon situation. I feel like we're finding ourselves in, and if Final Fantasy and World of Warcraft can vary their patches in a way that the two are responding to each other and helping each other grow then we get a better overall game for both spheres rather than, you know, the juggernaut of WoW just running over everything constantly. And we've seen like, you know, Wildstar, I remember one of the big things of Wildstar being like actively dodging things. Ooh. <laughs> and we saw those ideas, you know, leak into other MMOs too, even though that one didn't really last. I played, I played more of Terra than I did of Wildstar. And yeah, Terra was I, I never action based. Terra. Never played, uh, uh, Guild Wars too was pretty action based as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. So whatever the case is, uh, it's fascinating. I'm, I'm, I always have a passing interest in World of Warcraft, even at, at the worst of times. Like I, I, I am in my own, I, I reach my own drama hound moments where I'm like, I'm done. I can't stand this game. I can't stand another second of this game, but you would damn well believe I keep my ear to the wall. So I'm like, I just want to, I just want to see if, I just want to see if they're fighting next door. Like, and I'll admit it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being entertained by drama. I think so many people think it's dirty, think it's gross. If, you, if you're our age, you probably grew up with reality TV and you're like, ah, ugh, it has this thing. It's like, whatever, enjoy what you like. You have fun with it, it's cool. If it's a purge valve for you, whatever it is. Uh, I'm not your therapist. <laughs> I mean, like, that, there is that element, right? Where, you know, if, if you find yourself in a stable, healthy relationship, you don't have drama in your life. So you kind of look around <laughs> for in other places to kind of fulfill <laughs> that little, the little bit of tea, as they call it, in your life that you might be searching for. And then oh, yeah, absolutely. thoroughly put it away absolutely. when you have your own tea to drink uh, and yeah. issues going on. Yeah, no, I, uh, find, I find drama very, very amusing when I'm in the mood for it. So I, I got nothing against it. So, yeah. Uh, it's interesting right now. It's in full swing. We've got our first uh, animatic. What are they calling this one? Legacies? Yeah, legacies. Uh, this is the the slideshow, the animated slideshow that fades in, in and out of various pictures. I ate these I, things up in BFA. I thought the entire fish thing was just, I was so into it. You know, the Cthulhu yeah, fish. I, I, really, I really enjoy these. They, yeah, the, uh, it was Warbringers? Yeah, Warbringers. In BFA. And I forget what the one during Shadowlands was called because... Yeah. Well, no, actually, I was, I was about to make a joke because it didn't interest me. But the ones for the Shadowlands were actually really interesting. Uh, but uh, 
sadly, uh, they didn't really make good on a lot of what they set up there, in my opinion. I they mean, were I, Arthas in front of me, making him look sure. awesome, and then they did nothing with him in the actual expansion. But uh, as I remember it, they started these in Warlords of Draenor, and I ate those up. I know you didn't really enjoy the more Borderlands kind of boss thing they went for, but uh, it's, it's, that's putting it mildly. I uh, opened disdain for it. I yeah. hate it. But for me, it like established <laughs> who I was going to be fighting and made me look forward to just a bunch of dudes. I want monsters. I want I want tentacles coming out of eyeballs. I want seven arms. Like I want something really like to wow me. And a bunch of orcs. I was like, uh, I don't really care. <laughs> you want to wow you? Yeah, I bet you do. Yeah. So that so that those animatics slideshows did that for me and for me who the bad guys were, who Gul'dan was, and I got kind of into it. Um, you know, I, I fell out for, honestly, just financial reasons after WAD and didn't pick up Legion for a very, very long time. But uh, I ate up, like, every one of those little videos they made for BFA. I was super into it. I was digging the war thing they were going for. I was super jaded for Shadowlands. Didn't touch it, never downloaded it, never bought it. And every single one of those, I watched them all. Just as a the, the worst kind of skeptic, like pre decided, I hate this no matter what they're going to show me. I hated Bluther. I hated everything I was seeing throughout it all. I thought the Sylvanas one was okay and kind of interesting, but for the most part, like I did not even give them a shot. I was just, I don't, I don't think they did an afterlives for, for Sylvanas. Yeah, which, where they she didn't. did like the power slide and like the like cut, cut two dudes in one power knee slide. I, oh, wait, but yeah, wait, hold on. But was that, what one was that part of? I think that was part of the Uther one. The what? The Uther? Uther. Was that the, I think that's part of the Uther one. Oh, it all ties into Bastion. Oh, because and... he's going to drop like Arthas into the pit or something. I'm sure, yeah, it's been a while since I watched the Afterlives one. So uh, I'm completely blanking on where that, because you're right. You're right. Who Uther is? Yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't. It, it doesn't particularly matter for my point. The point is, I watched it extremely jaded. So I am still coming into these slideshows with Nosdormu, right? He was not Chromie. I don't really know my dragons very well, but I know he's got sand powers, and I'm like, why isn't Chromie doing this? Chromie's the the sand one, the time sand one. What are you doing? <laughs> You're stealing her thunder. I like Chromie. Uh, <laughs> What are you doing here? <laughs> talking to talking to someone in the dark. Um, like it, okay, if, if if you're thinking about the one where Sylvanas, where we see her die to Arthas, that was the lead up to BFA, not the lead up. To okay, that Shadow. was BFA. Okay, cool. I, so I did like that one then. But yeah, no, I like. I, I, well, I I like the flashback. It, it, the whole the whole. This is the jumping off point of me not caring about well, WoW's story anymore. Th 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 that builds up Sylvanas and then the, the the burning thing and like we were really into it in the household. Like we were like. Kristen's was, uh, was a super Sylvanas fan. Like we were, we, we ate up all that. Like we were really excited for war and world of Warcraft. I love how much past tense there is in all of your, your wording here. It's oh wonderful. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. So, so, so you're still so like delightfully subtly bummed about it. <laughs> oh, dude, absolutely. It was a great story. Like I, we'll, 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 we're going to talk about, you know, we're going to talk deeply what I'm into later when I talk about what I played this week too. I, I have preferences. I have opinions. And I'm on this earth for a short time. And when it comes to my enjoyment time, I'm going to have some, you know, some big nose to drop. Uh, so th this animatic didn't really do much for me. Um, Same. I I like, so so, the, so the, for those that haven't seen it, Dragonflight Legacies Chapter 1 is out. It focuses on, on Nozdormu meeting a Drakthir that I guess served Deathwing. If there was, I do not know the Drakthir lore. Um, and I don't think they look very cool. So they haven't really piqued my interest to want to dig deeper on the Drak Theory. You tweeted this morning that you sound you found like some Drak Theory art that was like actually kind of rocking. It's, it's from this. Oh, it's from the video you're looking at. Is there? At there's the very a... end. The oh, oh right. Out right. of the shadow. Oh, and right. And spreads its wings and uh, looks great. Like if that's what they looked like, I'd be making a Drak Theory day one. Yeah. But the the way they look in game they're like i like the cartoony look of wild but they're a little too cartoony they're a little listen i'm a soft boy but they're a little too soft boy for me <laughs> <laughs> i hate their dance so much oh i haven't i haven't seen their dance yeah it's very um it's very tiktok club you ever you ever seen someone dance on tiktok with like light up shoes welcome to 2022 kyle we're gonna make we're gonna have 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 uh, uh 
what's the word I'm looking for? Viral dance trends from TikTok seep into our references on our MMOs. Sure. It's no, I, I'm not saying like all the dances and all the ages of the internet were great. Like, you know, but I, I just, I just saw that and I was like, oh no. I, I, Cause I, <laughs> when I think of like dragon people in World of Warcraft, I think of like Black Rock Spire chunky boys, like walking out maybe like mm, centaur dragon, dragon. Age, yeah i th- like, yeah I, I, well honestly i usually think of like either hot elves or uh <laughs> or deathwing if i and, you know the, there's that part too where like you know galatron big dra- i remember reading about galatron in like old chris metzen sketches so it's got reference you know they're getting into titan stuff i'm i'm not concerned oh, yeah, galatron has there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh galatron stuff we got a lot of galatron out of uh, hearthstone funny enough oh really when did that Hearthstone's, happen? Hearthstone's weird, man. Like, you, it was also the first time we saw a full visual representation of Nazoth was in Hearthstone, not oh, in WoW. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, we got a, a Nazoth card with full art years before Nazoth showed up in BFA. Maybe a year. Maybe it wasn't years. No, I, was I, I remember that. Before. I, so my Hearthstone knowledge stops completely when they added Bloodstones, the whole Quillbore thing. I did not like them. In, um, oh, you're talking about Battlegrounds? Battlegrounds yeah. Oh yeah, it was a Cold War patch. Yeah, I did. I did not like that patch at all. So I just I left. But then Arena, Arena got really good for me. So Magic Arena, not Hearthstone Arena. Yeah, yeah. Did. Arena I know was what you're talking about Hearthstone yes. fans might be confused. Yes, Arena was great when Hearthstone <laughs> came out. I really, really loved Arena because you couldn't do that anywhere else. And then Magic Arena kind of did it better, in my opinion. Magic Arena is very well done. It is very, very well, well done. done. So, so, by the way, you should try Marvel Snap. It's also very good. I've been seeing a lot of people talking about it. I don't know what to make of it. i mean i've there's so many games of course that you look at images of and your brain goes what the this, 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 there's, there's boxes and like you're getting there's a bar <laughs> over here this is where like i would i would i would, I would lightly caress your face and go just try it just try, just try it. it yeah, yeah. <laughs> just 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 try it no, and there's for so- no other reason that I'm legitimately curious what you would think of it, but that's, this is an aside that, that we weren't planning on talking about, but you brought up card, or I brought up card games, so here we go. Absolutely, no, and, and the, the power of friendship and, like, people telling you to play things, like, it's a very powerful thing, and that's where we find ourselves here with World of Warcraft, in particular for me, have, you know, uh, not spo- uh, spoiler tag, like, what, I'm not spoiling anything, and more that I can't watch all of Preach's videos, but I really like Preach. <laughs> I really Same. respect Preach, and... While I can't click on their Final Fantasy videos, because a lot of them are story-based or they're showing trailers or whatever for our own content creation pipeline, the videos I do watch and the clips I see of Preach talking about being a dad, be it a Tataru <laughs> in a joke video, like, the, the dude speaks to me, and I am digging it. And so seeing him arrive on Blizzard campus and doing a gag with Ian has a Costas who feels like he's kind of off his chain. Like he's, he's becoming his own person. He's starting to become that leader that I kind of want for a project. He honesty. No, I, I, I totally get what you're talking. It's hard. It's hard to talk. I don't like, I hate commenting on other people's personalities. Yeah. But, but there was a time where I felt the, the, the leadership on world of Warcraft were, uh, Overly aggressive. Maybe not antagonist, maybe not antagonistic, but definitely down to just f- argue and fight with people. Yeah. Like maybe they wouldn't start it, but they also didn't seem all that interested in ending it. Um, and now, and, and any, for any reason uh, d- d- that made me like, kind of not like has a style all that much. And I, I am digging what I've seen out of the team in terms of their, like how they talk to the community. It's it's a weird thing to talk about, but I talk I talk about a lot how I in, I enjoy analyzing the marketing tactics of of any studio. As uh, spent spent the last two years of my life studying marketing, um, <laughs> about to get my master's in in digital strategy. Everyone keeps asking what my master's is. That's the only reason I even bothered name dropping it right there. But um, I just find it fascinating, and and I don't know if it's been a conscious effort on uh, Ian's part or not, but I just feel like the dude is at like at peace if that makes sense like he just seems more chill like he's more comfortable navigating the 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 the, i guess the public duties of of his position and i just kind of enjoy it it's 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 weird we we have a mutual friend who does a politics podcast and he just looks at politics as like a big like game and he talks a lot about that and i really enjoy it shout out to justin robert young 
Um, that's how I kind of look at this stuff. I'm like, man, it's, you gotta, you gotta, you have to manage people at some point. And I think Ian has has gotten a lot better at it. Well, and we're all products of the people around us and seeing Ian feel more free to troll, to joke back, to be more organic, to say, I don't know. Like not just we're listening to the community, but like, I don't know. That stuff means a lot to me because we all don't know shit. Like uh, that's, uh, yeah. it's just, we don't know. Like life is full and of I unknowns. That, yeah. I think that feeling of, of being afraid to say the wrong thing comes partly from those, those pre-recorded videos that you and I both aren't the biggest fans of. Right. But, well, and outside pressures or who you're next to, like in some of those old, uh, call in episodes, uh, community things where they would have him and others kind of managing like the questions being fed to them. They seemed almost frustrated that people would even ask these things. And that to me speaks to like, you know, when I was a kid, you know, I was a jerk when I would hang out with my jerk friends, but when I'm away from my jerk friends, I was nice. So it's, you know, d does that speak to an overall culture change and that sort of thing? I, I do not know, but I'm responding to it. And with preach putting out that message, I'm kind of going, wait, what now? I thought, what? Oh, 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 am I wrong? What? D do I got a big delicious hat I should be eating? What, what's going on here? Kyle, are you saying you're being influenced by an influencer? I'm being influenced by an influencer. <laughs> yeah, so th that's, that's the product they're trying to make. And there's one- That's how it works. There's even, one... when you're making, even when you're making content yourself, you right. can still be influenced. And but there's the ones the like thing. the survival I think... guide. I hate it. Like, I, I really like the people in there like hazelnutty, but I just, it, it, it feels scripted. It's, it's stilted. I've, I've never known you to like a survival guide for anything. I hate the <laughs> idea of just like day one, you won't know what's going on. I'm like, you're a video game. You should be fun. <laughs> Tell me what's going on inside your systems. I don't, I shouldn't have to watch. It's like a five minute video. And I'm like, it's, complaining about strategy. Having to watch it's it. part of the lead up. It's to get you pre hyped. So you can start thinking about your, your, the things you want to do, planning your day. It's like, it's like looking up a guide to Disney world. Before yeah. You visit. 10 things you wish you knew before you blah, blah, blah. But it, 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 yeah. I'm with you though, because yeah. I don't look, I, I'm fine with that stuff existing, but I don't look it up until after the game comes out and I know what questions I have. Exactly. Exactly. I'm very yeah, much. But the whatever. Same that's way. us. We're weird. It's fine. It is. That's why I'm we make content because put... we have these oddities inside of us that. <laughs> it is also. <laughs> it's also why we're probably not super internet famous. Because <laughs> we don't just do yeah, it. We don't do, yeah. We're, we're <laughs> proud. You know, at the end of the day, like, I really like our documentary style videos we put up. Like, they're, they're a little heady, I'm sure. They're not clickbaity enough. Like, I, I have a lot of pride and self-respect like that, that makes it sound like I, the other people don't have self-respect we all have to play games at some time but you know like i'm very <laughs> proud of what we make uh it's, to me it's all a game to play I don't, I don't care what the thumbnail and the title is as long as it is is true to what what you're gonna see yeah even if it's inflammatory and what is inside is much more level-headed i still want the promise to be paid off yeah. that's that's uh, that's, that's it i just it. want to keep my promises and if we want to get into the science of what we name things and how we make our thumbnails that's it that's all i want sometimes they are inflammatory and that is 100 my goal but I, I i will not put anything on there if we don't actually get to that topic in the video that's that's all i care about i can sleep at night as long as the promise is fulfilled <laughs> I digress. This is all, uh, it's very interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm the most interested in dragon flood. I have been just because uh, like you, I, I, I don't, we don't know preach personally, by the way, and like we wouldn't call no. preach a friend. I'm sure preach knows we exist. Um, but he is a personality that I really jive with. I like his personality. I like his energy. Um, but also I've got, I've got some buddies I know that are, uh, you know, more, closer to our camp where they were just like, ah, I think I might be done with wow. And now they're, they're enjoying the pre-patch and they're like, no, no, it's uh, it's honestly pretty solid. And we've been through all that before, but I don't know. No, it's, it's content. Like th that's the skeptic in me, right? It's like, this is content for a game that people enjoy. People are going to hype it up because there's now content. When that eight month drought comes, it's going to be back to final fantasy. And that's the content machine too, is the whole, like yeah. I'm, I'm quitting. Wow. For final fantasy. It's like, well, maybe, Maybe we finally got what we wanted. Maybe games just kind of end. We're moving out of a live service sphere. And that's okay. Like, hating catch-up mechanics. Maybe they're actually there to, like, get you back in. Rather than to destroy the gear you had. 
that's just you kyle that's me i know i hate <laughs> i hate ketchup mechanics like that's that's just you right but that nullifying my work in an ongoing living and breathing world doesn't sound like something i would enjoy i want to hit every single raid in order so that you know i dark souls this business but if we can get to a world where the games aren't demanding your time aren't fomo based final fantasy 14 has taught me that that can exist now and more so i guess i can say the way i choose to play it is reinforcing what I like about it. And I hear from others who are at in game saying, yes, that's how you play this game. So mm. not entirely my own opinion yet, but sounds like I'm in agreement with what end game looks like in Final Fantasy 14. My chillest thought on all of this of, of, of any desires I have to play World of Warcraft is I just think it would be fun to do with you. That's it. That's just like my super, like, I don't know. It would be fun to do more dungeons with Kyle. That's kind of the simplest way I feel about this. We love co-op games, but yeah, and uh, I, I'm fully aware that my World of Warcraft knowledge that I drop in these videos where I'm like, Final Fantasy does something better than World of Warcraft. Blah, 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 and Kyle talks. It's BFA knowledge from what, season one and two? Like it, it's old. It's very old. <laughs> and a lot of people call me out. In fact, um, we've ended up on like Asmongold's Reddit, people talking about us. And in particular, people are like, yeah, that oh. Kyle guy doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. I'm like, well, <laughs> it's kind of true. <laughs> I'm a little out of date. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I know someone did send me one thread. And I think that, I think I, that might be the thread you're talking about. Yeah. I, think there no, was I, a comment I don't. Back. I, don't I, I remember this is entirely selfish. I remember going, whoo, thank God I made it out of there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, no, I don't. I don't. No, I don't was, search my name online. I don't. That's not healthy for me. I'm I've a, looked up grinding gear on the Final Fantasy subreddit a few times. OK. Um, they're super kind to us. They are. Right? Only, yeah. Like like really, really kind. Um which I'm not used to. <laughs> I'm used to some that's kind of trashing me. So yeah, hating. It's, uh, it's nice. hating. We they hated Starcast. They hated Into the Nexus because we were a bunch of casuals and we taught things wrong and we didn't constantly interject. Which I now do. I do like a lot of uh, just in case interjections now because of that fear in the past. Yeah, get over it. I know, I know. Like it, that's how people <laughs> learn. You don't, you don't say, "Hey, you want to make comes a from a place of love, man." That comes from a place of you don't need to worry no, about it's, that it's, shit. It's like you, you want to make a pizza? Cool. Let's go to the store. We'll buy dough. And people be like, "What? You gotta make your own dough." And I'm like, "This is the first time they're making pizza. Let's buy a pre-made just, dough. Just, just let, just get them into it, and, and then open the make pepperoni. They gotta cut their own pepperoni. You're like, no, we don't need MMR hey, for pepperoni. Hey Kyle, you yeah. know what that sounds like? It sounds like someone saying they don't like ketchup gear. Oh, because because it makes it easier for people to get into it. Not fair, fair. Just a little, just a little, just a little, no, just a little, dude, just a little dagger there. One hundred percent, absolutely. I know you're. I know we're past this. It's just yeah. Just no, gonna, you're, you're absolutely right. But that, that that's because I was playing that game in a you. It, it, it there's it's so multifaceted too. But in the past, I treated MMO subscriptions as my gaming expense, and that's what I had to spend. So when they would come out, you know, I would be like, oh, man, 15 bucks is worth like five AAA games. I'm saving so much money by paying for WoW. And when they do catch up a camp, I'm like, what? I've been here the whole time. Why are you, why are you ruining gear? Why, what? I, I work so hard and... Well, well now you're not going to be here the whole time, so it's, it's fine. Exactly, now I'm dad, and right, I'm like, totally oh, catch up mechanics, that's, that's pretty nice. Like, Dude, when I was in it, I love, not that we plan to have this conversation, but we're here, so let's have the conversation okay. for a moment. I loved it when I was in it, uh, when, when Wrath, when TOC dropped, and you could, you could get pretty, de like, stuff that would let you do current raids for badges. Um, I was so stoked about it because I was an altaholic. And I was like, finally, I can get my alts geared without having to, like, find my way into pug raids. Sure. Like, I was really happy about it. Um, so even even when I was, like, a diehard raiding four nights a week in Wrath of the Lich King, I still liked catch up gear. Because then my alts were, they were they were ready to go at a moment's notice if needed. So, to yeah, toxic gamer uh, Kyle Ferguson. Here's about <laughs> it's the perfect <laughs> time to come I'm back to saying. WoW. And I'm like, I've been here the whole time. I hate everything. Stop falling on. No one's asking you to fall on any sorts. <laughs> <laughs> no one's asking you to fall on any sorts. No, no, no. No, it's fine. Anyway, uh, anyways, Kyle, all I'm saying is let me know when you're interested. All right, fine. Just give me that call. You just give, I'm just, I'm, you just, <laughs> all you need to do is you just need to text me, it's time. And I'll know. I'll know exactly what you mean. You text me, it's time. I'll take five days to answer you like I do, or I'll shoot you a few memes in the meantime, because that's what our text messages look like. And then maybe I'll answer you. 
Little, Folks, we, Kyle and I have a, a very specific rule where we only message about work or anything related to content creation on Discord. Texting is strictly for shit posts and memes. <laughs> So, like, if you were to pull up our text chain between each other, it's almost entirely images. Like, friendship should be in 2022. Yeah, yeah we're like, no, 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 no. The te text, that's for our friendship only. And Discord is, can be for, you can also, be, we can be friends in Discord, but we, but it's the only place we're allowed to talk about work. <sighs> so. There's a, there's a, there's a little, like, there's other news going around, but it's all just, like, announcement kind of stuff. We're, we're in, yeah. we're in the doldrums right now. We got a Witcher yeah. 1 remake in the Unreal 5 engine, which is very exciting. Dragon Age Dreadwolf entered its alpha phase. Oh, speaking of games I don't trust. Uh, and uh, Callisto Project is having some crunch problems. Like, it, there is there there is the usual internet sphere, but uh, World of Warcraft is really just hitting at the, the right time to get all the eyeballs. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And, and, and I... I I have to imagine it's only, I'm sure they're happy, but I, I, th this is the kind of thing I would see conspiracy theories were like, they planned it. And I'm like, I don't know. I've, I've never seen Blizzard put anything out when they should have. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure. No, it's happy just accident. Luck. Happy accident between patches. Yeah. 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 I don't know. But hey, here's to it. And uh, maybe I'll see you in Azeroth sometime soon, Kyle. Moving on. Moving on. Hey, if you would like to, you know, if you like what we're doing and you're thinking, it's, ah, I just love it when those two dorks talk about any kind of game. I don't care what kind of game it is. And um, you're like, well, maybe I can help cover another MMO subscription for them. You can do so at supportourbromance.com. Shout out to our wonderful patrons. That just goes to our Patreon. In case you're wondering, like supportourbromance.com. Garrett, where are you? Where are you taking me? I don't want the Garrett and Kyle only fans. It's not. That's not what it is. No. It's going to take you straight to our Patreon. And if you do want our OnlyFans, uh, it doesn't exist yet, but we, you know, we can talk about a Patreon goal. We can talk about a Patreon goal. How much, Kyle? <laughs> <laughs> my, my honest opinion. We're in the middle of the Patreon ad and you're asking me for, I've got, I've got to. I, I love MMO content. Ignoring it would be much like I mentioned about Dungeons and Dragons. It's a bad call because you insulate yourself. You end up in an echo chamber and you don't know what's out going outside or how things could be better. There's my, there's, there's the business call, but if you want to support that investigation, you could do so <laughs> at support our bromance.com. <laughs> wonderful we really appreciate everybody you'll get some perks add free versions of the show many you, you won't hear this which this week honestly i feel like is is, is maybe a downgrade but uh <laughs> we really do appreciate it thank you for the support and now let's get into this week's trailer park yep mm, yep mm -hmm. Kyle, did you see that the Simpsons are about to do a Death Note homage and the entire thing is done in anime style? It doesn't look like the Simpsons. So this is real? I thought this was fake. I thought this was some Twitter nope. thing I saw with like... Uh... This is legit. This is, I think, this weekend. It's the next Simpsons Treehouse of Horror specials. One of the shorts uh, will be... Okay. <laughs> will be... Uh, I think it's Death Tome. <laughs> for legal reasons okay uh, you, got, yeah. you got lisa here walking down the street with the death tone it looks awesome uh, the treehouse of horrors you know they're they're a thing i enjoy them yeah I'm, I'm not i'm not the biggest simpsons fan in the world i'm more of a futurama guy like i'm fine with the simpsons i respect you know what it's what it's done for 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 you know mature comedy animation um but i'm definitely futurama is definitely my mac graining you know a uh, uh, product of choice the word i was trying to pull from my my brain there uh but this looks so freaking good and I, <laughs> I haven't watched this in forever but i'm totally gonna watch this well i remember back when they did an x files episode like my we never watched simpsons growing up but my whole family like sat down and was like because oh, my parents were nuts about x files so we watched that one like when they do their their tie-ins they get a lot of views much like the hey the world of warcraft south park episode right the, these things work and the treehouse oh, of horror yeah. always stole like stephen king stories and did them in a very very quick order inside their sphere I, I i really like the um what's the machine called in futurama the the what if machine those episodes are really fun the what if machine yeah where like they ask if uh what if fry was a fish or 
Bender was giant or something. I don't like remember that. that. Oh yeah, no, they're fun. They're they're Treehouse of Horrors, right? Like, uh, it's in, uh, tales of in, interest. In, the tales of interest. Oh, gotcha. I was gonna go with inter uh, interdimensional cable on Rick and Morty. Yeah, interdimensional cable. Like, I mean, internet uh, dimensional cable is a little more um, improv-y. For sure. A oh, bit, yeah, sure, yeah. sure, but it's still like you get to do something different. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. If you haven't seen it, folks, if you're listening to this on audio only, like it is full on anime. They got a studio to do this. They're not yellow. Uh, it, also, it takes place in Japan. There's a wider shot of the. Th if you scroll down, there's a wider yeah. shot of Homer and Marge and Lisa. And so instead of pounding beers, Homer is pounding sake, and the sake bottles still kind of look like the beer he drinks. And the, so there's like so many nice little details that I love. Oh, I it's guess delightful. I guess the the demon, what's his face in Death Note, could be Bart. Like he's kind of Barty. Ryuk. Ryuk. Yeah, yeah. Apple, Apple guy. Wasn't that Willem Dafoe in something? Willem Dafoe. Oh, in the live action Netflix adaptation of Death Note, which everyone hates, and I will go to bat for because it's just straight up. It's not really Death Note. It's just kind of a a horror comedy and i think it's fun i love death note and i still kind of enjoyed that netflix movie uh, you know it's, it's okay to like you know adjacent things that are not exactly on brand it's it's a it's a really fun bad movie i gotcha i gotcha yeah yeah well i that's, that's okay yeah that be that makes me curious i do like death note you know it, it wasn't fun <laughs> but you know that's but death it note may is, be my good. favorite anime it's very Death good. Death Out and Fully Cooley are just warring in my brain at all times for was was that my favorite anime. And mm. it's fine. I live in a world where I don't have to choose. Yeah. There's also Princess Mononoke. There's, there's, we all have our comfort picks. Mm. There's a lot of D&D kind of animes that I really enjoy putting on in the background. Mm. Man, I could, I could watch Princess Mononoke basically at any point. At any point. If you were just like, hey, you want to watch this? I'd be like, yeah, this sounds like a good use of my day. Let's do it. I mean, we just... Uh, made an avatar last airbender joke in our last video and i'm kind of like oh it's been a while dude i went to a spirit halloween because we're gonna be handing out we're gonna be handing out candy on monday and our house is done up katie got one of those 12 foot skeletons sure so you're gonna attract like, our house is done up and i don't have a costume and i'm i'm like i hate store-bought costumes man but i'm like i need something what are you gonna do i don't i don't they have a they have a beetlejuice i was like my hair's real long i could just okay, tease it out you could Beetlejuice. Yeah, I was thinking I could Beetlejuice. Katie's been talking about doing cartoon Lydia for years with just like the just the the, the cobweb poncho. Lydia? The girl in Beetlejuice. Oh. But you do the cartoon version oh, okay. of Lydia yeah. with the with the cobweb poncho. Okay. I'm like, let's just do it. Let's just figure, let's just pull the trigger. Let's go. I'll spend my weekend slightly distressing it, making it look a little bit better than the store bought crap. Yeah, yeah. There uh, yeah. there's all sorts of websites dedicated. I remember um I got <laughs> I got briefly, very, very briefly. Uh, this was a uh, pandemic time, so we all had our, you know, uh, sourdough things. Uh, mine was upgraded IKEA. I got really into upgraded IKEA. Is that like a, a IKEA hack site or something? Yeah, IKEA hacks exactly. So you buy IKEA okay. stuff, and then they would tell you how to go to like Home Depot, buy additional screws, replace all the things, replace the wood with real wood, and turn IKEA stuff into nice stuff. Okay. That, that was okay. my that was my hobby <laughs> in the middle of pandemic interesting yeah that or i don't know man we're gonna be streaming that day maybe i should just buy some cat ears and go as a makote or something you could yeah be on brand be very scary other than a dude in his mid-30s trying to look all kawaii <laughs> that's pretty frightening <laughs> yeah i um i mean that's just Kristen is literally due with our second kid on Halloween day. I have thought nothing about it. Um, our, our kiddo, uh, three years old, is going as Spider-Man. He's Spider-Man. Originally, yeah. my thought was I was going to get a diploma hat and then put sheets down and I'd go as a building. And then when I pick him up by the arm, I can swing him around. So he's swinging around a building. And I would just dress up as a building. Be really cute. It's all diploma hat because it's square. It's square, yeah. And then I would attach the sheets to it. It would need to be a lot wider than usual, though. To well, it has to be thin because I have to be able to put my arms out and then you know <laughs> make my arms white because they're the spider web. So that was my <laughs> my cute idea. Oh my god, dude, you need to find a way to execute this. I don't have time. I don't oh have my time. God. Hey, dude, if you lived locally, I'd be like, come over Saturday. This is what we're, we're gonna doing. Find we're gonna I'll distress. Yeah, you distress your Beetlejuice costume. I'll build my building. 
and we'll yeah. go. We're gonna. Oh, dude, that's adorable. You need to do that. You need to figure out a way. <laughs> you've already you've said it now, and now people want to see it. Like I know it's out there. it was such a great idea, but oh man, I I do not. I'm having a hard time investing in Halloween. You could, you could try just building like a, a, like just take a long cardboard box and do it maybe from the, sh like under your armpits. So you're just out the top or something. That's true. It's just a little easier to walk around. Yeah. Like, a little face hole just on a cardboard sheet and hanging yeah. off a hat. Hell, I mean, in hell, you know, just, I don't know. Kind of just, just do a box torso, paint windows on it, make it look like, and just wear black pants or something. I, I'm kind of, Years ago in Chicago, I discovered uh, the day after Valentine's Day for chocolate. So I, I've, oh, yeah. I've kind of become a holiday late kind of day. Uh, oh, kind dude, of guy. there's like, nothing better. Yeah. There's nothing better. So I, I, we, I think we have finally stopped doing this, but the day after Easter, we would all go out and buy like two boxes of Cadbury eggs. Right. It's a good way to do it. Yeah. Absolute favorite. Are you, uh, Valentine's, you go out the day after. Our favorite is the giant Reese's heart. Mmm, I've seen I used that to buy one. like six of those and just store them. I usually go for the dubs. I like I like dub chocolates. Mm, yep, yep, it's good stuff. Anyway, I love Halloween. I need to figure out my costume because they're gonna be some kids. When are they gonna air this thing? I'm, I'm honestly because I have to imagine it's this weekend. I didn't actually look up the date, but I know it hasn't aired yet. October thirtieth. So it'll be oh, a, a Sunday thing. Sunday. Okay. I, I, Disney Plus has all of them, right? So I could just watch it there. Um, I would bet it's on a one day delay or something. I don't know. Probably. I don't know what the, I haven't watched Simpsons on Disney plus. So I don't know what the delay is, but Hey, while you're over there, you should watch Andor. just stopping by. Want to take a quick break before we move on. Absolutely. Talk about what we're playing. Oh, uh, man. I, I heard the, 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 the smash brothers thing, man. It's taking me back. Did you see the, the I did not plan to talk about this, so I'm I'm going to surprise you. Uh, did you see the viral tweet going around, which was date yourself with a video game that came out when you were 18? Oh, oh, that's why you tweeted that. No, I, I, I didn't. I saw you do it and I was like, hmm, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Garrett loves sharing on the Internet. How nice. I do, it's fun. There's fun. Th yeah. there's, dude, I could be that person or I could be the ant that sends you the political chain mail. All right. I sure. choose no, to I do the I fun mean, those things. are my choices, right? Yeah. No, yeah no, no, no. You can one or the other, or you could be Kyle Ferguson. I don't just stays the hell off Twitter. I don't, and doesn't understand. I do and gets latest, confused by trends. I don't do home. I don't know what the trends are and why people do things. So, you know, take a picture of your right foot today. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> neat <laughs> that's just those are that's just perverts looking for free foot pictures man yeah. if, you, if you fell for that one i'm sorry but you got got <laughs> no so so what are you 18 hmm. well we're the same age uh, right uh well you're the same age it would be 2005 yeah oh okay huh. and technically into the first half of 2006 for you because you're a later in the year baby i've always been super late to video games is the problem you know so i often yeah oh anyway, resident someone... evil 4 yeah, that came out. That was my answer. RE4. And yeah. I remember picking that up for the GameCube. And that's the that was my first Resident Evil game. Oh, God of War 1, though. Guitar Hero? Holy shit. Guitar Shadow Hero Colossus? Was 2005. Yep. 2005 was a banging Half year Life for video 2? games. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Holy crap. Advance Wars Duel. Oh, my God. Ninja. Oh, Ninja Gaiden. Oh, my God. 2005 was a banging year, man. Holy hell. Yeah. Emo was in full swing. Video games were great. I'm not going to think about the state of politics and war at the time. That wasn't so good. But, you know. Chaos Theory sucked, though, as, as I remember it. Tom Clancy Splinter Cell. Chaos Theory. They were off the beaten path. I don't know if I played Chaos Theory. Theory. I, th I thought that was still the golden age of Splinter Cell. I'm pretty sure that's where I went. What are we doing? But I, I love thinking the first Splinter Cell was hard, but I was not into stealth games at all at the time. I was very impatient. Was this the third one or the second one? Yeah, third game. Third game sucked. In my humble 18-year-old opinion, I was not. Oh, Battlefield <laughs> 2? Oh, my God. There's so many games. I played yeah, like... Battlefront 2 as well. Star Wars Battlefront 2. Um, wow. Because that was the year. 2005 was when Episode 3 of Run to the Sith came out. And I was like hardcore. I spent like the whole year working on my Anakin cosplay, getting so excited for that movie. I played all of the tie-in games. Like it didn't matter how bad they were, I was playing them. Yeah, there was a lot of Star Wars that year too. Damn. I love the original Battlefront 2. That was a good game. 
we were spoiled but, for that whatever that trend was when we had a burden of riches yeah yeah anyway someone replied to my tweet of that with uh with the original super smash brothers it was, and they posted specifically the n64 box art and i was like oh my god i remember this coming in so i was far from 18 at that point but um i remember that game just washing over my school oh yeah well i was i was i had nintendo power like i was pre ready for it oh, yeah. i selected my characters i had memorized <laughs> moves i was studying up yep i got yeah i had a i think i had a three-year stack of nintendo power at one point and that shit's been long thrown away but oh i kept a couple oh. I've, I've anyway, got... I, I, I came here to ask what you're playing. Oh, um, but then at the top of the show, you said something very insidious, but I can't remember your exact words now. <laughs> but you're like, oh, did I fall in order? My yeah, <laughs> no, uh, like uh, I was, you said, it was something else. It was like old things masquerading as new things. I don't even remember, but because because like my answer, I, dude, I've been playing standard Hearthstone, which sure I haven't touched in a while. OK, well, for, before before you go any further, like and, and you advertise Hearthstone to me what how how's the system like if i got in there because you've been you've been when i first played i absolutely loved warlock to death and i had i played for standard for a very long time i had a malganis deck a demon deck that i was absolutely nuts about so you've been on twitter you've been talking about your your warlock deck and i'm really seduced by how would it be if i like got in and had to one to make that deck today and like uh expensive yeah uh. <laughs> it is not a cheap deck okay um so yeah i is I, I, I even before i exited angry chicken i was mostly just playing battlegrounds so i wasn't even that deep into into standard at the time um but i was hearing that the latest uh update left standard in a really good place and there's some some good deck diversity um I also had like one passing comment was like, Hey Garrett, I know the decks you used to like to play. You, you would probably like the decks that are kind of tearing it up right now. And so one of the decks, arguably one of the best decks right now to take out on ladder is a, uh, a curse imp warlock. Uh, so it kind of does two things from the end. It's just in that name. I, I'm sure it has whoever made it. There's probably a better name, but I go off of HS replay and they have very standard names for their decks. <laughs> and, um, yeah, man, it just plays a shit ton of imps. It draws a shit ton of cards love draw. because there's there's a card that draws cards based on how many imps you have on play. So at max, you you might draw seven cards. I like I like that a lot. You could potentially draw seven cards. I love drawing. Uh, and it's not horribly unrealistic with this deck because my god, it can play so many imps. Okay, so I play a bunch of imps. I'm drawing cards because I'm digging for something that's gonna win the game. Well, a little, not that long ago, they added a new keyword called infuse. Um, and so like, for example, there's one card in here that's a, it's a three, three imp, but it has infuse three, summon two copies of this. And what infuse is, is uh, if you have this card in your hand, it has to be in your hand, can't be in your deck, it has to be in your hand. If things die, that infuse counter goes down. So infuse three means three things need to die while this is in your hand. And then you get this effect, but you're making a shit ton of imps. They're dying all the time, Kyle. So you're hmm. going to get that infuse. How do I tell what cards are part of what sets when I'm looking at a Hearthstone uh, There card? should be a little watermark. Oh, uh, in which, the, which, behind the words. If you're in game, it's a lot easier because there's like hover over and stuff. If you're going through your collection, it'll just tell you. Yeah. If you're just looking at an image and you don't know what the symbols mean, it's a little harder. Yeah, well, sure. I mean, same thing for Magic the Gathering. It's like, it's a crown. Also a crown. Also a bat crown. And you're like, oh my God. <laughs> what, 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 is, what is this set? I hate this. Yeah, but it does have a lot of legendaries. Uh, the, the list I'm running has six. The list I'm running has six legendaries and four epics, which makes it fairly expensive yeah i don't think i could dive right in and have that ready yeah they did just announce today do, do, do. i thought there was a thing in here loner decks yeah this literally i haven't even had a chance to look at this man they had a big announcement today that they're doing loner decks for new and returning players so i'm just, uh what does that mean uh, yeah so uh, I know the way it used to be. If you were gone for X amount of time, they would give you your option. Pick a class and we'll give you a pretty good deck for free. It's yours. Here you okay. go. They're changing it. So I'm just going to read this because I actually haven't had a chance. to. I, 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 
I had a, yeah, uh, let's see. They said, instead of being able to immediately, or being immediately asked to choose a free deck to rejoin the ladder with, they will be able to test six loner decks for one week before selecting one to permanently add to their collection for free. Okay. So this is actually better. Hmm. So you can actually go in and test out some decks and then decide which one you actually want to keep. That's, that's so, interesting. I, it, it's still a little less generous than Magic the Gathering. It just gives you all your starting decks, depending on how many, like, how powerful these decks are, of course. You know, the Magic yeah. Gathering decks do tend to suck. I'd, I'd have to them. see the list. Um, it says there is an official... I don't, I, don't, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I just wanted to talk about the fact <laughs> that I'm back, in, yeah. I'm back in Hearthstone and I'm enjoying it. Well, and that you're enjoying um, Standard. That's kind of a big deal. Like that, It's I, been a bit. It's been, a, it's been a bit since I've, like, really been chewing on Standard, um, and I think it's in a really good spot um but also i don't know maybe we just got to, your mileage may vary i got some distance between me and like there's a freedom and not having to talk about it every week as well that makes sure. me i think more receptive oh uh, oh warlock it's a murloc deck oh, oh. i don't want, I don't want but now so so since i quit playing back in you know and again i got really into battlegrounds there for a bit um and then i moved on to things like um Oh shoot! What what is the auto battler on Steam called? Like, uh, oh, Underlords? No, no, that's the that's the Valve run one. I'm thinking of uh, it has like. Oh, a, you're thinking about the original one, Auto Chess? Nope, not that one. Uh, there's like Joey's <laughs> Joey's Coliseum. Um, what? <laughs> it's like an Eve Despots game. Despots game? Yeah, that sounds right. I'm opening my Steam library right now. I know. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, Despots game, dystopian army army builder. Like the name, don't worry about the name. Uh, but it's an auto battler. I got really you, into you that say, for a bit. You say auto battler on Steam, and 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 it, there's there's really popular ones, and then there's whatever the hell you're talking about. This one's decently popular. <laughs> decently popular. Uh, but yeah, I I got really into that and left Hearthstone behind for a bit. Yeah, there wasn't any sort of like angry breakup. I just thought that the whole Bloodstone quillbore thing was kind of random and i was having some balance issues with the heroes portraits thingies that i liked and standard standard is just like i lost my malganus deck and i don't like playing wild because it just it's too much <laughs> that was like 10 years ago. i know dude absolutely but i really really <laughs> liked my malganus deck i had everything for it it was fully decked and i loved it and then it's just it there's not a good way to get cards like arena. I can't in magic. The guy go into arena. I get the cards I want. I play a bunch of arena. I play, I play a game while I'm building a deck for a game and I play the game and there's a really nice through line there. Um, but yeah. in, in that way, I'll, I'll give it up for Hearthstone's battle pass. It is a uh, much more giving than their previous reward system. You can get a good amount of gold. And, all that. Okay. and I'm not, and I'm not selling you on you. I'm not no, 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 you no, but grind. your deck sounds I, really honestly, fun. Your deck sounds I really fun. I honestly can't speak to it. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't played Hearthstone on a budget in forever. I came back and I was just like, I have a shit ton of dust. So I can do whatever yeah. I want. Yeah, and you, <laughs> like, you made a fun deck and that's the kind of deck I'm into. Like, it, it's not a demon though. You've, how, how cool is the picture of the thing that wins the game? Uh, a lot of times they just give up because you've done so much damage to them. Oh, uh, with the um, curses and stuff. But what's the name of the dude that you summon that's all cool and does the winning? Um, well, the, I mean, the, the, your big bomb card is like uh, Imp King Rafam, and his art changes uh, when you infuse him because he hasn't infused. Uh, his battle cry is he resurrects uh, four imps that died for you, but if you infuse him, he then buffs them plus two plus two. So he hits the he hits the board, and all the imps come out. But his art changes when he infuses, and it's he's like uh, casting a big spell in the room, and the books are going everywhere. Oh, he's he's kind of. Wait, that's Rafan's scheme. Why Why does the wiki take me to a whole page of imps? I just want to see it, King Rafan. Oh! I, I, I found the art here. I'm going to send this over to you. He's one of those um, mummy people. Uh, he's a... Like an ethereal. Yeah, ethereal. Okay. Pictures matter right. a lot to me, so that's why I care. Yeah, yeah. Here, here's, his, here's his infused art. Just going to send that over to you in Discord. Okay. Yeah, okay. like, you know, casting a spell, the books are floating. Yeah. And, and then if you could imagine, you slam this down and then four imps just emerge out of nowhere and they get super buff. Yeah, that sounds fun. I mean, I, I love drawing and I love big monsters. So it, you're speaking my language when it comes to... Yeah. My understanding is some people are very mad about this deck right now, but I'm having such a good time playing Well, it. I mean, yeah, if it's a good deck, like, I mean, I 
I've played some real, you know, dickish decks. Like that's, I love blue in, um, in brawl. Uh, Commander. I'm a, I'm a blue counter spell jackass. <sighs> So, uh, yeah. Kyle, sometimes people want to play the game they're playing. I don't know these people. They <laughs> they had played too. I'm playing standard. It's not wild, you know. I'm I'm within the rules. I'm being a dick within the rules. It's legal. Hey. <laughs> it's legal. Make it legal. Exactly. And then uh, and then on the side, my little side in Hearthstone right now is a, a priest has a Naga deck that's really just a buff deck. And it's wonderful. Oh, you just buff the living crap out of things. Do the do the buffs buffs suck but most of the time, right? Because you spend a card to invest in a card. And... It's easy to get two for one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but no, it just has ways of of it working out. Okay. Yeah, the way the deck works, it it kind of just works out. Oh, well, I mean, that's, that's, that makes me curious. I'm currently over this current magic set. I have everything I want for my current deck, so I could go for a little. Go for a little poke in there. Let's see. see a little Hearthstone jaunt. Yeah, yeah. See what's in there. See what's going on. You know, I'll screen share a game with you after this so you can see it in action. I really okay. like this deck. Sure. But yeah, what have you been playing? I heard it's uh it's a uh, the, the anime. Yes, I mean it is. I was uh, playing anime, everybody. I understand JRPGs. It's um oh, man, man. So how would I how would I how would I talk to about Persona 5? So for me, it's hitting so many things I really, really like. Let me let me get this back on screen here. Um it's hitting so many things I really, really like about just anime in general. I really like stands from JoJo. I really, really like... Uh, I never played Psychonauts, but I like the idea of investigating people's minds and, like, going inside them. And there's this whole, like, you wear a mask, the mask of your heart kind of thing. Like, there's this whole, like, psychological angle at persona five with the jojo stands you even know what i'm talking about when i say jojo stands i'm not talking about like eminem stands that you've talked about no i have absolutely no clue what you're talking about okay so imagine your inner self what would that look like the most badass version of yourself uh it's I don't, just this ratted out emo kid. Yeah. I don't so, know. so you summon that as a ghost behind you, and then that ghost battles other people's ghosts. That's what a stand is. So with a D on the end. Yeah, stand, not stand. Okay. Okay. It's something I find fascinating because when you so get... it's, it's your Instagram profile picture. Yeah, yeah. So imagine like <laughs> getting in a fight with somebody and then they project out their inner self. Like it's something I find really, really psychologically fascinating. And Persona 5 was recommended to me for a very long time by my good friend Dan. We text back and forth a lot, you know, old college buddy. But I didn't have the PlayStation play it. So it finally came out on Steam and Game Pass. And I'm like, oh well, I got Game Pass. Let's let's play it there. It's a life simulator. You, you go to Japanese school. I got horribly lost all the time because it's like, find the restaurant. And I'm like, I can't. <laughs> it's, I don't know. I don't know Japanese street layouts. I don't know how to navigate the subway. I've lived in Chicago for a long time. I know how a American subway system works. But like you go into the school and it's like, go to the teacher's room. And I'm like, where? Go to your homeroom. You're a second year or something. I'm like, where do second years go? Like there's a lot of assumed japanese culture things that you will benefit from like oh the, the 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 highest years are on the bottom floor and the lowest years are on the top like if you know some cultural things you'll navigate the game way better i got lost for hours but i didn't dislike it because it just has so much personality the music is super groovy it has a lot of energy it's not what you would expect to hear and it just means that the game has a very unique style you know it Graphically, it's 2017, I believe. It's it's a little old. But when you talk to a character, their their animation uh, face shows up. If something dramatic happens, they kind of do a sweep across the screen. The combat is turn-based, which is something I'm really into right now. You know, playing a lot of real-time games. I got Jedi Fallen Order there. I got Final Fantasy XIV over here. And having a turn-based game really fits into my diet right now. And particularly about to be a second dad and have a little one hanging out with me. I'm, I needed a turn-based game. You know, it was a little one sleeping on me. So it it just hit just right in all the little 
cubbies I was looking for. And it's just got so much personality. Like you, you look at it, you look at games and you wonder like, what? Why are other games doing this? Why are other games having more fun? This is so much fun. It's literally so full of energy. So people are asking, you know, where'd I get to? Currently, I am making my way through the first palace, the first major dungeon. And you go in and out. And as you, there's a, there's a full-blown calendar. Like you enter the dungeon. You know, let's say it's the 13th of April. You go as deep as you can and you leave. And then you go home and you clean your room and you talk to other kids at the high school and that's the 14th of April and you go to school where you up your stats because you read a book or you go to class and then the evening you go back to the dungeon and whatever you did in that kind of class day merges into your stats and you meet other characters that eventually have their own stands their own personas they're called personas in this game persona 5 and you do a turn-based battle it's extremely busy there's so many different kinds of tactics to do but it has a great pace that you learn this stuff at and you can just set everybody else in the party to auto battle if you I'm want. looking at the UI and I it's like I love hate it if that makes any sense yeah. it's so messy but it has such a, a style to it yeah man like the the menu itself like just the menu you use to like equip stuff is super stylish and really rad the way it flies in and flies it, out it is the it is the opposite of that damn Disney Animal Crossing thing. Yeah. They, they have the, the most sterile menus on earth. It's like you could smell the bleach. Yeah, let me see. Like, <laughs> like my exit menu, like even just like exiting the game is crazy stylish. It, the whole thing just reeks of personality. And interesting. I, God, this is very, it looks very early aughts, which I kind of dig. Hey, I, I believe it's um I believe time I mean, the graphics itself look better than that but yeah I, I believe time period really... wise it's definitely in that you know 2010 I'm not sure of the exact year like you you do conversation choices on a phone like your your friends text you and then you have dialogue options while you're texting and that's how you like decide if you want to go to the dungeon that night oh that's yeah I'm looking at it right now it's that's clever and there's really good voice actors here. Like uh, one, the main guy who's kind of your father figure, for lack of a better word, is voiced by the guy who did Helsing in the Japanese audio. So it's just, it's packed with good actors. And even the cat thing you talk to, it's like really cool. Like e everything about it is working for me. Yeah, this, this, this looks like something. About, dude, you're not the first person to, well, you're, you're not actually pushing it on me. You're just telling me about your experience. But I've had so many people like, Garrett, you would love Persona. And I just look at the time to complete and I'm like, one day. <laughs> because and it's, then that day, day never comes. Yeah, but because it's turn based, like there, there's systems in play, but uh, I'm just playing on normal difficulty. I don't, I think you could control minutely every character, turn off the auto battle feature, and have yourself a really deep strategy game. It seems pretty well balanced in that way with lots of farming and lots of going to school and. A lot of people play this through with a guide for the first time, just because there's so much, ma uh, not man yeah, Majora's Mask is a little like that, right? Like, there's just so much like, oh, on day 20, make sure you go to the laundromat, because then you'll meet this character that you unlock the conversation with on the 30th yep. of April. Oh, no, I 100% I played Majora's Mask with a guide. Yeah. Um, I, like, I got every mask, like, I loved that game, but also, like... I couldn't drive yet. I had nothing better to do but sit home with, with my Nintendo 64 and just dump hours in the Majora's Mask. Right. This would be a game that you would get someone like for summer holiday. Like here, here's your next four months. Go for it. But unlike Dark Souls or even like Jedi Fallen Order, you're not going to lose skill. Like you're not going to walk away, come back to your character and be like, oh, what was I doing in here? I can't play this. I suck. Uh, let me restart it. And then, of course, you never I beat it really like the look of this it's i know you're saying it's older but at this point in my life it's like does it look better than a switch game and that's not a high i mean you, you could get it on switch you can get it on switch if you want like that would be oh, very very switch? chill yeah sure. oh, good little, switch game little handheld that it, it might uh, switch switch games always end up looking so crunchy in the end so it probably isn't as beautiful it, as it looks on my computer here it is a console that released underpowered yeah yeah but so. uh immense amount of style there's a really cool kind of background story going on 
I'm not usually a fan of the time skip kind of storyline. Oh, you're at the end, and let's what happened last week kind of thing they, that a lot of TV shows do. It's it's nailing. I told that it, uh, pulling a Tarantino. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very Tarantino-y. And the initial story quest is like it it's got some darkness to it. It it toes that line that a lot of well, like Avatar: Last Airbender, like like there's some serious subject matter. You were investigating a bad person's inner self, but it toes the line of still keeping it fun and quirky. And I'm finding Kelpie. I like Kelpies. <laughs> <laughs> you and Kelpies. I know. Boy, howdy, do I think they're a dumb monster? But hey, that's me. And so you're, I'm sure Kelpies in your mind are a lot cooler. Probably horror horses. You never, you never spend time with horror horses. Are horses are dangerous. I like undead horses. I'm a big fan of undead okay, horses. Yeah, they're, I think partially decomposed horses are terrifying looking. Right, but they're horses very really uh, scary skulls. They're very subservient. Uh, undead horses. They rarely like try to bite you or stomp on your toes. Like real horses will mess you up, and they're very moody. <laughs> they have a lot of personality. I've, 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 you know, okay. All right. All right. Hey, you're selling me on it. Now all I need is just hours, Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, Can well, you find me like two extra days a week? I mean, just like an hour a night, man. Like, just like just <laughs> load it up, fall asleep to it. Nothing's going to happen. It's turn based. Like, like nothing, nothing bad's uh, going to happen if you fall asleep. I can't, I, can't, it. I can't play a game while falling asleep anymore. I can't do it. No. It's, it's, it, it, any game, really, it just kind of triggers my brain. I don't get sleepy while playing games Eats anymore. Yeah. 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 Well, and I definitely can't do can't do like Hearthstone or anything like that. Well, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, I will be I'm going to go back to Fallen Order because I really want to beat that game. And like I said, it's it's skill based and I want to make sure I don't lose all those skills and just forget about it. But Persona 5 is sitting right there ready to dominate my life. This thing is really cool. Oh, you know, hell yeah. I can't wait to see how it grows. Like the, the initial quest is of that dark that I really I, I'm really digging can they pull that off again? Like, clearly there's more chapters. I'm, I'm getting to the end of this castle dungeon. Can they stick the landing? Can they do this again? Can they escalate? We'll see. That is that is certainly a question. And we have some questions this week. Good segue. Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. You can send your questions your thoughts, your comments to feedback at startgrindinggear.com or if you're supporting us on Patreon or a member of our YouTube channel, we have a dedicated channel in our Discord for our members and patrons where you can ask us questions. It's called Questions for the Hosts. Drop them in there if they're for the show. If they're not for the show, go ahead and just tag us and we'll, we'll answer you as soon as we can. Yeah. Sammy wrote in and said, hey, uh, want to know what's been your favorite gig job? you've ever had i'm not sure what kyle's done in the past i assume play with puppies <laughs> but this is this is like a one or two shot job this is not like a i'm an employee this is like oh. a turkey gig oh man uh well i worked so i worked downtown chicago at a temp agency when i first got out of college and one of the jobs i was i was in the mail room and i was basically the guy who cleaned the printers every day you know went around and like squeegeed the copy machines because there's nothing else to do but you know they just want bodies and seats you know the executive comes by and they look in the mail room they go hmm it's staff mm, i like this mm, I, i'll invest mm -hmm. in this company Gross. so i spent the entire time of that two-week job you say uh one or two shot job okay well, it, was, it was two weeks but i spent the entire thing writing a diary that was a fictional character and i based the D, &D campaign off that diary that my players found so they would dig through the diary to solve the mysteries that they were doing along so the So did adventure. you just not do work? Well, I, I cleaned the copy machines. <laughs> I did that part. But literally, they were so obsessed with image that I couldn't sit at a computer. Like, my boss had a computer, and he just sat there all day playing games. But I, as an employee, wasn't allowed to have entertainment devices because it would look bad when people would come by. Like, the boss can be on a computer. He's, like, Excel sheeting or something. But I was supposed to be ready and able and like sometimes i go out and like move chairs for a meeting but it was it was miserable two weeks but god that's i so really terrible. like i really like that D, D campaign i wrote out of that journal and I gave my players the journal and that was the the object they found that solved mis you know mysteries along the way <laughs> kind of like i um, feel like i feel like it's a bit cheating because the reason you liked it has nothing to do with the job that's true i mean is there something <laughs> like uh i mean granted not now i need to think if i actually liked any of my 
jobs. <laughs> like, I, your one off, your one off yeah, jobs. Um, my ones out of nah, college. So I, uh, I'm, I lived in Los Angeles after college. Uh, when I graduated, I moved out there with no prospects at all. I just wanted to get the hell out of Florida. Um, and uh, so, so things were tough. Money was very tight. Um, I got a, I got a lead on a, on a, a working, a, just as like a production assistant on a commercial shoot. And uh, it was fun as hell. Uh, that was really cool. I ended up doing three of them with the same, with the same manager over the course of, of me living there. And uh, that was just fun. It was funny enough. I never saw the final product, but the, the universal studios, uh, California park, they added on. So I've still never been to this park except for on this job. And I didn't get to ride Jack, but if you're a California native, you've been to universal studios, you know that they have a backlot tour that is, real you actually go through actual sets used in movies i don't know are you aware of this Kyle? yeah 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 you wear the backlot tour so but there's they mix in little little things little ride like elements yeah, little events to kind of you know jazz it up but it's a functioning backlot yeah i think i think they used to work jaws into it somehow i think that's gone now but anywho they were just opening up their king kong edition and it was based on the peter jackson king kong and so it was like a big kind of like uh, all encompassing screen, 3D, IMAX, like your tram would go through this tunnel and this, sure. this show would play. And uh, so that was getting added onto the back lot tour. This was this would have been 2010, I think. Um, so if you're local, you probably remember when this happened. But um, they did a series of commercial. Oh, you know, no, I did four of these now. Anyway, doesn't matter. Oh. They, they did a series of commercials where Kong was, it was the aftermath of Kong running around Los Angeles. So the very first one of these I did was at Dodger Stadium. We, we had full access to Dodger Stadium for the entire day. It was like shut down for us. And so it was just a small crew of people in the Dodgers baseball stadium. And I was geeking out because that's where you uh, first meet the, uh, Paul Walker's character in Fast and the Furious. <laughs> He is <laughs> testing his car out in the parking lot at Dodger Stadium. His oh, his all wheel all wheel drive Mitsubishi Eclipse. You move like that. Um, I was also a geek because I'm not a big sports guy, but I am a big fan of the uh, late '90s New York Yankees, which were coached by Joe Torre, and at the time Joe Torre was the coach of the Dodgers. So uh, that's a, another little little window into my upbringing, but. Um, yeah, it was just cool. We uh, we like we had like industrial fog machines, and we had a call time for a helicopter flyover with a camera that we had to have everything in place for. And so we're like, it's just neat. mad dash. Uh, we had these massive tarps printed that they kind of have this big section of the field where the bleachers are. There's a big gap in the bleachers so they can bring trucks in and out for like gardening and all that kind of stuff. We tarped over the bleachers on either end where this break was, and it was painted to look like the bleachers were like broken. And so oh, we, we, we okay, put yeah. these tarps up, we ran these massive fog machines and there was like, we added a bunch of fake debris to the field and, and this helicopter flies over, does a bunch of flyovers to get footage. And that was the day. But it, I mean, it was just, it, like, it doesn't sound like that much, but it was a lot of like running and moving stuff and zip tying down. And yeah, uh, it was the first time I ever was ex experienced. Uh, uh, I found out what craft services was, which was just a shit ton of free food, which when you were as broke as I was, it was Big wonderful. Deal. Yeah. Yeah. First time I ever had a cliff bar. <laughs> <laughs> Deep memory. Yeah, man. No, I went and ate lunch in the dugout. It was great. I don't know if we were supposed to do that, but I did. <laughs> so. Nice. Yeah, and then we did another one on Hollywood Boulevard, and that one was cool because we brought in a wrecked car and flipped it upside down, and uh, we got to work with fake glass because there was fake broken glass everywhere. I had to climb up in the the broken car to set up the fog machine. Ooh. A lot of work with fog machines. So, hey, I'm available for parties and appearances. Nice. Um, yeah, we did that. Lasers, and I got to be get in, some lasers in those fogs. Yeah, I got to be an extra in that. But again, I never saw the finished product of this. I never saw it air. I don't, I don't, I, th I think it was online only ads. Hmm. So I've never been able to find them. Um, and then we did one on uh, Santa Monica pier where we brought in funny enough, sandcastle artists from Sarasota, Florida were flown out to dig King Kong footprints in the beach next to Santa Monica pier. Wow. And we brought the same busted up car and we put it in one of the footprints and made it look like it had been stepped on. 
dude, when when you realize that movie companies are just they have so much money, they're trying to make more money out of money, so they spend money to make money. It is <laughs> such an insane ride. Like that is that yeah, is man. stupid. That is so useless. Yeah. And the one I forgot about That's was the thing. final thing the final thing we did that they added on is we got to go on top of the ride, which was this building I think is like 10 stories high. So we had to use the service ladders like that have the cage around it to climb oh, up on the roof of this thing. Oh, yeah. And we had big vinyl footprints that we put on top of it. And that was another like, got to get this done. We were working. We started at like 3 a.m. and we worked till till dawn because they wanted to shoot during morning golden hour. And they had the helicopter coming again. It was wild. These were I was I was working my ass off. It paid at the time it was more money I'd ever seen. I sure. think it was like I think it was like 800 bucks a day. That's crazy. I never made that much money in a single day in my life. I yeah. was like, holy shit. I don't have to worry about rent for a while like it was lovely no yeah you would ride you'd ride those projects now same thing happened at the temp agency right like you get a get a gig <laughs> go in 2010 9 like oh my god yeah yeah no that was that was fun as hell the the manager he was really he was super cool i uh i i really bummed him out one time because we were all shacked up at the same hotel and he's he was like hey you're young you had any weed <laughs> And I'm like, nope, sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> Terribly disappointed in the youth. But I had beer, so uh, we we sat down and watched. Actually, it was the the day uh, Walking Dead premiered. We watched the first episode of Walking Dead, and we were both like gobsmacked. We we're yeah, like, holy shit, this show's was amazing. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's it's very dated. I remember like all of this. This is a very strong memory. Worked my butt off. I was exhausted. The beach was the worst, man. Spending like eight hours in the sand, my feet were destroyed. Yeah, like the go get them years, you know, where you uh -huh. are. Yeah. Where your body is just for lease. <laughs> You're like, it'll get better in two days. I'll, I'll be running. It's okay. Yeah. I, if I did this now, man, oh my God, I'd be done for a month. Yeah, dude. I did like downtown courier stuff for a little bit in downtown Chicago and, and I didn't have a bike or anything. I just ran and it was, it was insanity. Yeah. I'm kind of curious what gig jobs our listeners have, uh, I've had yeah i'm not sure what they look like today either during you know an industrial uh or internet age right like the idea of running a document down a couple streets sounds absurd <laughs> doesn't it <laughs> i printed this here take it somewhere else <laughs> uh well uh moving on with a really hard-hitting question echo wants to know ice cream chocolate vanilla or strawberry chocolate vanilla Oh, well, well, okay. Hey, hang on. Hey, what was the, is this cheap or is it good? My answer stays the same. It stays the same? Really? Okay. Yeah. Really, really high quality vanilla? It just gets better. Oh, man, because if we're doing cheap, I'm going chocolate. But if we're going high quality, I'll go vanilla. Vanilla bean. Mm. I can't do just chocolate. If, if we're talking soft serve, it's, it's the split every time. It's mm. the swirl. Just give me both. Don't make me choose. But I can, I can just chocolate by itself. I just get it gets old for me. I'm like, this is just this is too much of this one thing. And then strawberry, just get to get it out of here. I, I want nothing to do with it. For some reason, our, our questions this week went this way, because our next question from Albardo is, what's your favorite? Okay, pasta hold on. Shape? Have you looked at how many questions Albardo has sent in? Two? No. Many more. Oh. Many, many more. You should, you know, next time you're bored, go look at our document where I keep the ones we haven't gotten to yet. <laughs> okay, I thought there was a theme going on this week. We had food on the mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's that's Alberto, who I believe I found out after this is infamous for asking too many goddamn questions over in the Taliesin and Evatel Patreon Discord. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, still a good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah we... but favorite pasta shape? Yeah. I don't have a favorite pasta shape. No, you got to choose. I actually, I'm not a big fan of anything outside of spaghetti unless we're going, it's full of something like a ravioli. I think that's, that's a shell. Uh, well, uh, no, well, ravioli. Yeah, but there are shells. Ravioli is uh, a shape. My favorite one that is odd is not because of the shape, it's because of what it's made out of, and that's gnocchi. Gnocchi? Potato pasta. Oh. Gnocchi rules, man. Okay. You, do the, you just saute that up. In a pan with some oil and a little butter. Mm. I'm nuts so about good. wheels. I love pasta wheels, and they just don't wheels? sell anywhere. I love wheels. <laughs> Is there a reason 
they don't sell them anywhere. Dude, they're so good. They, they get the, the Parmesan cheese gets caught in the holes so well and the fork just runs right through the wheels. And sometimes you get like four wheels on a single fork and there's kind of like this dopamine rush where you're like, oh shit, like that's a nice pile of lined up I wheels. Hadn't, I hadn't thought about them being a vessel for carrying other things in yeah. the pasta. Uh -uh. Dude, I don't think I've had wheels since like 92. I mean, maybe they're for kids, but damn wheels, man. Damn. Wheels. Gotta get some All right. Wheels. I've been, maybe I've been sleeping on wheels. Yes, everyone's sleeping on wheels. You can't find them. <laughs> I hadn't thought about the practicality of this thing gathers and brings with it yeah. other flavors. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, no, I got to go with Noki. But uh, honestly, I'm just, uh, man, uh, I, I, uh, there's, a, there's a place in, where we go to Key West, there's an Italian joint where every day they make their own pasta from scratch. The only thing I ever get there is just spaghetti with a sausage link because it's just like it's just so good because it's just it's scratch made pasta that you don't need to mess with it. Doesn't matter. Like they could give me a shape, I would happily eat it. But can't argue with perfection. Doesn't matter. Just doesn't matter. No, I'm I'm real. I'm real basic, man. I'm real. I'm a I'm a real basic individual. <laughs> and. Really, all aspects of life. Nothing wrong with that. I, I could expand upon that, but I won't today. One day we'll have we'll have the Garrett list off everything that makes him basic. <laughs> like our cringeworthy, we'll have our basic test. Yeah, are you basic? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My water also wanted to know what's our favorite lock picking mini game. I like it in Skyrim, man. I really like the lock picking in Skyrim. Yeah, and that was an evolution of uh, the Fallout one, which is highly functional. I there are yeah. other ones, but. Um, Oblivion had a good one too, but I think. Oh, you know what I was reminded of though recently? Hmm. The one in in 2018, God of War, where you move the pick around until it vibrates and then you stab it. That's all right. I kind of suck at it, but that's yeah. The vibrating sort of element. Uh, I I, I kind of like the. It felt like a time waster in a more action based game like Arkham Asylum, but I I kind of like the the dual stick password thing you do around doors. Oh yeah, I do. Like I, I like that one. Yeah, it's more. Of, yeah, I also I really like the tube puzzle in uh, Bioshock. I know. I was just about to say that. that. Yeah. Yeah, I just like I like that. I, do I just like lock picking? I think I might just like lock picking mini it, games. And, it's and, good. And, you know what I don't like is is hacking in Mass Effect. I don't like that one. No, any of the like heavy word game ones like uh, in Fallout. I hated that one. I see that footage of Half Life Alex, and that looks miserable. I do not want to do the thread the needle. Uh, operation kind of game mm. now, you know i own half-life alex and i still haven't played it do you even have a vr headset yeah yeah oh. i've got the whatever the final tethered oculus was i have that oh what have you played on it uh, car games probably like uh um no it was uh, uh star wars squadrons was the big oh, thing i played on it fun. and i have played a little bit of car games but honestly my, my favorite car game for multiplayer is gran turismo and yeah that, that doesn't work because hmm. it's not on pc <laughs> It's PlayStation only. So. Half like Alex look, it, it looked like the future, but there's there's still some kinks to work out. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, then we've got a couple spooky season questions lingering. Which you know, if you want to do one more salvo, everybody feel free to send them in. We'll, we we can do a post Halloween wrap up next week. But um, we've got a Baggins wants to know what's uh, a or some Halloween costumes that you've worn that you are most proud of. I had a, for a time, it's now long gone, just wear and tear. I had a full Go Ghostbusters costume. Uh, oh, shit. Even said Ferguson on my chest there. And I had nice. the, the custom embroidered little Ferguson had the, the knee. I didn't have a backpack. I didn't, I didn't have the full backpack thing, but it was a really solid outfit. And uh, it's what I met my wife in. Uh, so she saw me as a, a Ghostbuster adorable. and was like, oh, she was dressed as a nudist on strike, which means she was dressed completely normal with a sign around her neck that said nudist on strike. That's an exhausting college trope. Yeah. Of I'm too lazy for a good costume. Yeah. So. Well, you know, we, we weren't looking for love that night. I'm just looking. <laughs> I was just looking to be a Ghostbuster. She was saying, F it. <laughs> and then just being, you know, I'm going to wear this. Uh, I, met, I met Katie covered in tinfoil. We, we met in high school orientation. Wait. And we were in the group. They forgot to assign a group. And oh. so our our team building exercise be since we were literally the leftovers was they, they were like, here, make some costumes out of aluminum foil. Ah, leftovers. Yeah. yeah. 
I yeah. can see it. So I was sitting there looking like an absolute conspiracy theorist, um, being trying not to be awkward around this girl that I thought was really cute. Yeah, no, that's, that's a cute story. We didn't date for a few more years, but yeah, yeah. My pre- fi- by the time, I f- yeah, this is this whole story. When I finally mustered up the courage to ask her out, she had a boyfriend. So ah, yeah, yeah. That was like almost the end of freshman year. My favorite variant on that costume, though was years later i put it back on and i did like some gore around my chest and i had a chest burster alien so i was a ghostbuster that had a chest burster oh crossover yeah a little crossover yeah, you'd, yeah. Be, you'd be popular with multiverse shit yeah right no it, it, it would have made more sense nowadays then people were like yeah. what are you oh, i don't get it you can't cross I, put a, I put a lot of effort into my heath ledger joker costume in college that's a good one i've seen that picture yeah i put a lot of effort into it um and I remember I was like determined to wear it to campus. So I woke up stupid early that morning because I, di- I didn't have a better way to do the scars. So I literally woke up and molded the the face putty. Like I sat there with like a palette tool. Yeah. Artists going to art school. And I just I just slapped the putty on my face with some spirit gum and I just started carving into my own face. That's how I did it. And it took me like two hours. So I'm up at like 5 a.m in the bathroom trying not to wake my my roommates up just carving at my own face <laughs> nice and i had already dyed my hair green like sickly green because like my hair is pretty dark naturally so i like barely bleached it to where it turned it that like gross like off pea yellow where you don't ble- let the bleach sit long enough and then when you hit it with the green it gave me that really dirty green so i was like switch so, like, i was really oh, stoked you, i was like yeah you full-on dyed your hair for it oh yeah no i was stuck with that disgusting green hair for a while after wow. that wow Nice. Um, I think the next week, though, I went and got my first real mohawk. I, my hair was a little shorter than it is now for the Joker costume. So we'll find some pictures. I'll show them on stream tonight. I don't have any pictures of uh, of this one. I worked for two years as a Johnny Depp Pirates of the Caribbean impressionist at Halloween at a. a I locale. bet you did. Mm-hmm. I've seen your I've seen your uh, your John, your your Captain Jack Sparrow costume. Yeah, I, I don't know where those pictures are anymore, but. Um... You know, I, I I don't think I noticed this until just now. I think the first time I met you, you were just like the Prince of Persia at Megacon. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we didn't talk to each other. No. but you were with Brian. Yeah, and I did meet up with Brian, and you were and you were with uh, it was you, Brian, and Rich. Rich was Resident Evil. Hmm. Uh, one of the tactical outfits. Stars. Yeah, he was a stars. Member. Star. Yeah, yeah. I remember, dude, back in the early Megacon days, that the star costumes were big. Um, army you were surplus the, was really easy to do you were in the bad prince of persia though the one that, not judging you your it hadn't come out great, yet it hadn't come out yet the, but it was the the scarf the one with one. the scarf mm-hmm. yeah that game wasn't great no it was not but it was um it did have a good visual style though so in mean, the costumes the costume's solid i was also a really big fan of like cell shading games back then so like i saw prince of persia kind of coming out with the style and i was like this is gonna be amazing blowing my mind i think this is legitimately the first time i met you and i didn't realize it no yeah we passed uh I, i'm pretty sure you were anakin there right you were doing the yeah yeah that would have been the first year i ever went to megacon and yeah. I, it, it was only a year after revenge had come out so my my costume was still pretty fresh and so i went to my first megacon as anakin that's right yeah yeah ah uh, deep be young again yes <laughs> so long ago <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna go with Heath Ledger Joker. I worked really hard on that one. Nice. I even had to call in a favor. I was like, hey, Graham, can you sew me a vest with a lapel? I could not find a green vest with oh, a lapel cute. anywhere. Lapel vests are a little, actually, they're easier now. It doesn't matter. I'm not gonna, there's a, there's a brand at Dillard's. There's so <laughs> many lapel vests. You have your pick of the litter now. Um, anyway, uh, Nicole Lauren asks, what's the best Halloween costume that you've given the barking triad? Ooh. <laughs> so Wicket's never, so, so in case anyone listening is like, what the frick is the barking triad? Uh, my three chihuahuas show up on stream pretty often and the stream have named them the barking triad. Um, Wicket, the youngest one, never been in a costume. We've never dressed Wicket up. I think we put like a football jersey on Wicket like once. <sighs> Zelda was in <laughs> was like a morbidly obese <laughs> unicorn once. Zelda's Zelda has now gotten her weight in control, but she used to be a little on the heavier side. <laughs> and we got her a unicorn costume that year. And it was like 
pink fur with a horn. And it, dude, she just looked like a pink sausage roll. It was hilarious. Well, wait, hang it on. I'm, so funny. I'm, I'm just remembering this. And I, I did you see the link? Someone someone got your Zelda sticker and reviewed it on stream. They were doing no. like Final Fantasy merch unboxing. And no, someone straight up on a stream was like, check, what? Out, check out this. And they were holding it up and they were they were like, yeah, there was a whole a whole thing. I'll have to send you a link. I was in it butts? yesterday. Yeah. I How did no one forgot. tag me in this? I don't know. I completely forgot. I completely forgot. I need to send you That's that. That's awesome. Yeah. I hope they liked it. Yeah. Your your emoji slash sticker was on an unboxing stream. Oh, fantastic. No one told me this. No? Yeah. Go figure. Yeah, send me a link, please. Uh, Bailey's had a shit ton of costumes. I have no idea. Whatever one he didn't pee on the couch while wearing. He got to a point in his life where if we put clothes on him, he would just pee on the couch because he didn't want the clothes on him anymore. That's a strategy. Yeah. He's been a hot dog. He's been a banana. Uh, <laughs> all the classic dog costumes, man. Um, There's an old picture of him when he was a puppy. This is before Katie and I moved in together, um, where he was wearing like the thing number one Dr. Seuss shirt. Sure. Like, and when I think of Bailey dressed up, that's what I think of. It's like that. It's a, it's a stupid costume, but like, that's what I think of. Makes me think of young Bailey, and he's, he's so old now. He's going to turn 15 next month, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's he's up there. He is up there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we never got into elaborate with the dog costumes. I don't dress up my cat. Oh, you know what? No, Wicket was Wicket. The first year we had her. We How did, did you... get her a Wicket costume. Wait, they sell them? Like little little yeah. arms or something like little gremlin arms coming out the front. No, no, no. Petco just had a full on. It was just a slip, and it had it was the red cloak, and it had little Ewok ears coming out the hood. Uh, so you put the hood up over them. It has fake ears that look like Ewok ears, and then the back part of it just it goes over their arms, and it just gives it like that red hood kind of slip. And Wicket's the perfect color. That's why we named her the name that she has. And so yeah, no, she totally she totally rocked it. That's it. That's the end of my story. <laughs> <laughs> that was deeper than I thought it would be. Uh, dude, we have a, you know, like the, the things you, what would you, not a rubber made, but the, the clear plastic kind of flat, long boxes to Absolutely. snap on top yeah. that you keep under your, we have one of those completely full of Chihuahua costumes. Like you do. K yeah. Katie used to dress Bailey up a lot and then he started peeing on things. Yeah. Found, found the solution to the problem. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so anyways, keep the questions coming. Feedback at startgrindinggear.com. And that's going to bring us to the end of this show. Play me out, Kyle. Oh, we're jaunty today. <laughs> let me let me crank this for everybody to really enjoy Ooh, there this. There it is. Oh, ah. yeah. I want to do a pipe puzzle in... <laughs> in Bioshock. Mm, well, Bioshock that's Infinite, right? This is more Bioshock Infinite. I guess that's fair. But they still had creepy, you they, know. They did, but you know, this Nazi is, music and more like Wild Westy kind of, you know, America <laughs> as we know it in America. <laughs> I okay. highly, okay. highly doubt it originated in America. <laughs> well we want to thank our badass patrons for supporting us on patreon if you want to support everything that kyle and i make together go to support ourbromance.com that will link you directly to our patreon and if you want some merch we've got grinding gear our store is open that is at buy ourbromance.com kind of looks like buy your bromance but there's only one why so you just gotta buy our bromance.com hey uh we got new patrons this week we want to thank so, uh, hey, for signing up, being a part of our Patreon, thank you so much, Mark J. Thank you to Zachary M. Rizabeth, we really appreciate it. Mike S., appreciate you. And Pothy P., I recognize that name. Yeah. Thanks, Pothy. Oh, thank you, Pothy. Thanks for becoming a patron. And uh, there's a very special level of patrons that we thank each and every episode. Those are our legendary level backers. Sean B., Mike R., Stephen J., Wayra E., Das, Cheesy Bob, and Sean with an E-A-B. That's why we got two Sean B's. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all so much for your legendary support. Yes, we really appreciate it. If you want to become a legendary level supporter or any level supporter, check out supporterbromance.com. Other than that, you can find Kyle on Twitter at Kyle Ferguson. I'm on Twitter at Garrett Art. Again, I have an announcement of an announcement. I, I'm announcing that I'm announcing something very soon. So, so follow... 
Twitter? Follow me. Oh, okay. Follow follow Twitter. Yeah, yeah, it'll be on Twitter. Okay. I'll probably make a peep about it on Twitter. You know, so I have an announcement of an announcement. This is my announcement uh, of an impending announcement. You'll know. You'll know next week. Um, and uh, we have a joint Twitter at Garrett and Kyle. That is for all of our content that we create together. Go give that a follow. Other than that, youtube.com slash TV for our YouTube channels where we live stream this podcast. It's where we do our Monday and Thursday live streams of Final Fantasy XIV. It's where we will eventually stream World of Warcraft when I finally break <laughs> Kyle down. Just keep saying it like fact until it's true. It's, it's going to happen. I'm gonna. You, I'm. I'm in it. I'm in this Final Fantasy 14 biz all because of you. It is your fault. You owe me one. It's my yeah, yeah. You got time to pay. It's up. your fault. We have a successful YouTube channel. It's time to pay up. Yeah, it's your. It's your fault, and you owe me. <laughs> So that is going to wrap it up for this episode of the Grinding Gear Podcast. Uh, Enjoy your weekend, everybody. Have a happy Halloween. And until next time, good luck and have fun. Take care.